This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Well, that did not turn out well. We should have just finished the baseball game. I prefer eating my meals alone. I kind of, I get that. It's just easier that way. For one thing, I don't have to go through the hassle of pretending to enjoy what I'm eating. In the first place, there's no cafeteria or a lunch counter in this school. The facilities themselves apparently exist. But after all, you can count the number of students and permanent staff here on the fingers of your hands. Spending the money to run a lunchroom for the benefit of that small number of people would be completely inefficient any way you look at it. So then you might ask, how does lunch work at this place? It's a pretty simple system. When we arrive at the classroom in the morning, we can write our names in a notebook on the podium. Every lunch period, a supplier delivers food to everyone who signed up. Boxed lunch catering, as they call it. Of course, it's completely up to every individual student whether we take advantage of the catering. Because the menu is basically left up to the supplier, it's possible to sign up only when they're offering something you want. Personally, I haven't asked for delivery even once. It's not that I'm worried about saving money, or that I can't trust food made by others. I don't have any religious principles against eating meat, either. I'm just not interested enough in what I eat to bother. They say that the common result of being raised in a food-poor environment, and considering the time I spent living together with my master and her crappy cooking, I guess it's only natural. A full stomach and adequate nutrition is really all I need. Incidentally, the lunch I prepared for myself today is free, plain, salt rice balls. The my side dish is also a quick job. After frying onions and garlic, I threw them together to cook with some canned tomatoes and kidney beans, adding a packet of chili powder for seasoning. Hey, if, if I liked beans, that would be a pretty good side. As my master used to say, humans ain't that fragile. You won't starve as long as you've got beans to eat. I hate beans, though. But I guess going with nothing but the basics is a bit too bleak for me. No point in living like a monk. So I've also brought an apple for dessert. That's a sad dessert. Kind of feels like I'm eating nothing but red stuff. But there's no point in worrying about a meal's appearance. This is perfectly adequate for my needs. Oi! You Why are you singing? So now she's dropped the honorific. Huh? Nani? That's fine. I'd much rather her call me by my first name. Don't just call me Yuji, woman. I don't remember giving you permission to not use one. Okay, it's not forbidden. You should never have agreed to this, Yuji. What do you want? <laughs> no deal. Spare me. Not even my parents ever called me that. Ridiculous. <laughs> Do whatever you want. And? You need something? Huh? No. No, I'll pass. Take your volunteer work to Makina, why don't you? <laughs> I, I got a, a, a half a dozen donuts from Tim Hortons. <laughs> Baked beans. Oh, you want to try some? What was that slide whistle? <laughs> oh, good! We found a new food that Makina likes. <laughs> like I said, beans! She just had a mouthful. Hardly a deal. Hardly a big deal. It's practical! Beans are nutritious. There's no problem. Hey, you! Don't just start eating my food. 
There's nothing wrong with canned food. I mean, it's not going to be as good as fresh, but hey, it's cheap and easy. Well, the beans and the tomatoes, yeah. Stop eating my lunch! I gave you permission to eat one bite. Look, stop eating it already. This is all I've got. They, they, they probably have machines to do it. They don't. They melt the skin off with acid and al alkali. Don't worry. The chemicals are neutralized and then they wash the fruit with water after. It's perfectly safe. Stop eating my lunch! You have your own! Hey, you! Uh, this girl's already halfway through my lunch. You planned this! It's fine, don't worry about it. I'm not a desperate enough to start stealing other people's food. No! What was with the, the trumpet? With that exclamation, Amine brings out a huge wrapped bunch. Looks like she's actually got a number of boxes stacked on top of each other. Ooh, it's the, it's the, uh, the deluxe lunch box from Clonad. Opening the lid, she reveals a box fit, packed with a rich variety of vividly colored side dishes, practically indistinguishable from a delivery lunch from some well-established restaurant. I see. No wonder the neighborhood calls this place the Money Sink Academy. Pretty luxurious for a school lunch. Oh, look at Miss Chef over here. Seriously? If you've mentioned that, then I tuned that out. Kyoto food in the district of Tokyo? Well, yeehaw. No kidding. So that's where Amine's infrequent lapses into that weird Kanzai accent come from. And come to think of it, the short-tempered, vaguely masculine side of her personality makes a lot more sense, knowing that her father is from a blue-collared neighborhood like Kanda. Ah, oh, man! Meat's the best. Meat's so good. Provided it's cooked and seasoned properly. You don't eat meat, Amine? Now that she mentioned it, I don't see much in the way of meat dishes inside this box. Bit of a surprise. I had you down as a carnivore, for sure. Alright, I, I can respect that. What? Your breast is getting too heavy? Ah. Well, I guess you can't exactly shed inches the way you can pounds. Of course, cutting back on meat now isn't going to make Amine less, any less imposingly tall. That said, if she keeps a careful eye on her diet, it might help maintain the status quo. Bit of a reactionary approach, considering that she's already pretty damn tall, but I guess that's just her typical passive Japanese mindset at work. As JB once told me, there aren't many Japanese who go to the dentist before their teeth start to hurt. <laughs> Meat is pretty good. I'm not a huge fan of meat myself. More importantly, I'll take care of my own food expenses. You don't have to worry about my tastes. Okay, Makina needs to learn to pack her own PB&J sandwiches, okay? <laughs> we can't keep spoiling her like this. Why are you so determined to stick your nose into my eating habits? What? What? I don't get it. In other words, they just want me to play house. That's, um, not okay. Or maybe somebody, say the principal, ordered them to become friends of Kazumi-kun for some reason. Either way, I'd prefer to maintain some distance. I can't be as casual about this if, as a normal student might be. I have too many things I'd like to keep to myself. I'm fine if they just want to be friends with me. That would be great. I just don't want them to be like, we're family now. It's like, we're not. We can be friends, but like, we're not family. Also, I'm not dating either of you. I'm used to simple food. 
そうそれそれそのいじめられるのには慣れているみたいなのもなんか悲しいじゃん今までどんな食事をしてきたのよ Well, I don't know. Nothing special. When I was a young kid, I may not have gotten much in the way of luxury, but I ate normal meals. My current emphasis on low effort nutritious food is the product of the way they did things at my previous school, the army. Pardon my French, but at that place, the principle was eat fast, poop fast. In the morning, we were kicked out of bed at 6 a.m. sharp for roll call, exercise, and running. And, all once, and once all that was done, everyone made double time to the mess hall for breakfast. The way the schedule worked out, we never had more than a few minutes to eat the meal. Anyone who took their time would get a dressing down from one of the seniors, so everyone stuffed whatever food they could into their mouth and forced it down their throats as fast as possible. Lunch was slightly different. In that sheer amount of food that they gave us, it became a challenge. The piles of meat and vegetables would have been hard enough to handle alone, but they'd throw in a heaping bowl of rice as well. We were expected to cram all of that into our stomachs in about ten minutes, washing it down with some miso soup. Naturally, we weren't allowed to leave a scrap of food on our plates. Vomit it up, and they'd tell you to push it all back down again. In other words, the taste was not exactly the first fiend on our minds. I never enjoyed eating that much in the first place, so once my meals became outright painful, approaching food in a purely business-like fashion felt like the natural response. You just sucked, like, all of the joy out of a great part of life. Nothing but rice and beans for lunch might seem sad to Amine, but I'm not fighting my friends for a can of food, and I've even got fruit as a dessert. You should have gotten the ho hos. By my standards, this is a high class, elegant meal. You also have Girl Scout cookies, so. I die, son. So, no, tabina cake and I got a tabiru me tie in a cow, not to come around, I know. If my face is putting you off your food, I suggest you don't look at it. Oh, I can I know. Kid and Ones and Obento scoot to get it, they didn't the crown. Soon, only Arika, she is one hundred percent going to drug our food eventually. Hmm. Nothing. Yeah, you're right about this one. Sorry. Well, can't hurt to play alone once in a while. To tell the truth, I had a similar discussion in the past with another pushy woman. Ended up turning into an outright fight. As certain busy-bodied German had this habit of coming to the mountain cabin where I lived with my master, mainly to subject us both to shrill nagging sessions. She'd barge in, clean up without even asking permission, make food nobody asked for, and then leave just as quickly. I think the woman must have gotten some sick pleasure out of it. Mmm, the nerve. How dare she. One day in particular, I got pretty indignant when she put away some book I was in the middle of reading. I ended up firing off the line, You're not my damn mom, with predictably unpleasant results. Well, it wasn't exactly the first time we'd fought, and it's true that I found her constant meddling annoying. So I honestly told her as much. Serious mistake. The woman in question, already a full-grown adult, spat out the supremely childish words, Fine, see if I care. Then, of all things, she broke down in tears, leaving me in a complete bewildered panic. Since that disastrous experience, I have learned a lot about how to handle women. The first lesson, knowing when to back down is crucial. Don't resist a woman's kindness. When a woman gets worked up, words won't get through to her. And the most troublesome lesson of all, women of the busybody type remember the smallest grudges for all eternity. Why do I get the feeling that this guy is just incredibly misogynistic? I'm happy you're willing to make lunch for me, but don't feel like you have to do it every day. I'd appreciate it when you have the time. Oh, uh, I know your intentions were good, Amine. Were they, though? I don't have a reason to refuse that would satisfy her. Not one that I can bring up here, at least. Anyway, I'm not looking to make the atmosphere in the classroom awkward over something like this. As for Amine, I don't know how she interpreted my sudden change of tune, but... She sounds downright contrite about her aggressiveness. We're both being mature about Fanes all of a sudden. Guess the two of us are still capable of being reasonable with each other? Seems like a good sign. <laughs> All right, Omre. You ate my lunch! How dare you! Well, a healthy appetite is a good thing. Yeah, she's got to get scolded for this. Don't you dare eat my apple. 
Stealing people's food is like the lowest of the low. I don't really mind giving her the apple, but I thought you said Makina didn't have that big of an appetite. That's not healthy. It's good to have a consistent eating habit. Sounds like a bit of an exaggeration. I dropped my hand on Makina's head with a thump. Where would the kid be storing all that in this tiny body? Hmm. <laughs> Strange. Maybe she works like a mole or a rhino, inefficient at absorbing energy from her food, so she has to keep stuffing herself or she'll starve to death. <laughs> For a second, I thought I had a shadow fall. I thought I saw a shadow fall across Amine's face, but she and Makina quickly get to work. They drag nearby desks and chairs up to mine, creating one large island. Hmm. Amine pushes one of the stacked lunch boxes at me. Inside, there's deep fried tofu! Ah, oh, worse. Da! Covered with red bean paste, also bad. Accentuated with thinly sliced boiled daikon radish. I'll, I'll eat that. Not to mention broccoli with sesame. This this lunch is terrible. Fried burdock root, I don't know what that is. Kyoto style grilled mackerel. I mean, I'm not that into fish, but that could be good. And chicken meatloaf. Okay, you know what? I'll take, I'll take the meatloaf and the radish. Together, they make an amazingly well balanced and elaborate meal. Holding back at this point would be downright rude. I thank her for the food, and I extend my chopsticks to the sliced daikon radish. Hmm. How many's cooking is somewhat light on the seasoning? I'd noticed not as much before when I had dinner in her room, but... To my ton, used to preservatives and artificial coloring, her food seems incredible, extremely gentle. Probably because I haven't eaten real home cooking in a long time. It tastes even better than I'd expected. Delicious. Huh? Amine, you really are an excellent cook. Yeah, but this is like a full course meal from Gusto's. Yeah, true. The dinner in her room was a simple stew, and the main ingredients were just some off of the shelf fish products, so there weren't any real surprises. But this meal has va the vaguely nostalgic essence of home cooking. The taste calls up faded memories of the meals my mother served me. Honestly, it's a bit of an emotional jolt. <laughs> Honestly, everyone should learn to make some food. At least you know how to make a few fiends and make the fiends that you like. You'll save a lot of money. Um. No, I'm gonna feed myself. No, I'll feed myself, thanks. Even eating with others like this is a concession on my part. This is going way past ticklish and into seriously awkward territory. Makina thrusts the omelet toward my nose with a clumsy grip on her chopsticks. I instinctively pull back and turn a frank scowl in Amine's direction. Hey, Amine? Do something about this girl, or so my glance was intended to convey. But instead, Amine bites her lower lip lightly, and an irrepressible smile spreads across her face. Grabbing a Kinpura burdock root with her chopsticks, she presses it toward my face, which I'd turned away from Makina's attack. Hi? Um... Run. Brutus! At two? <laughs> I want to feed myself. I am not a baby. That's my line. Caught between a rock and a hard place, theoretically, I should gain distance, then suppress each target individually. Step one, I need a chance to take evasive action. Have to create some sort of a distraction. Everyone in this room is now a potential weapon of last resort. My frantic gaze settles on Sakaki, sitting alone in silence, picking food from her catered lunch with her chopsticks. Sakaki, I'm begging you! As Sakaki glances towards us out of the corner of her eye, I send her a desperate SOS to my gaze. Her own silent message follows. Please. Don't think you're going to drag me into this. A truly cold and heartless answer. 
A brief, please try to eat a little more silently from your own mouth could save my life, and you abandon me? I've just witnessed with my own eyes the tragic moment. Long years trusting in a superpower's umbrella, forbidden from developing a military, still shedding blood and sweat in defense of our nation, all come to naught. Sakaki! Sakaki, my friend and ally, in the end, was I nothing to you but a shield against the menace of Amine and Makina? A sacrifice to suffer in your place for when the time came? <sighs> no reason to despair, Kazumi Yuji. From the start, you were no you were just a mere pawn in the great game. A dog kept alive on the whims of your masters, and you threw away the right to expect mercy from a god a long time ago. Didn't you know as much? Wow, what what did you do? <laughs> it's too late for me to think of the national interest. All that's left for me to do now is embrace the moment of reckoning. Endure the unendurable, suffer the unsufferable, find the cool serenity of still water. <laughs> What? Why, yes, as a matter of fact. Introspection! Hmm? What is going on in your mind? This Suo Amine woman is too clever at times. When she puts it like that, no matter how badly I want to escape the situation, there's no way I can bring myself to run away. That ruthless way she cuts off my path of retreat is nostalgic in a way. Reminds me of my big sister. Then again, compared to Kazuki, I guess Amine's methods are almost charming. As that thought passes through my head, the tension naturally drains from my body and I let my mouth fall open. <sighs> the Kimpara she throws into my mouth it has the same simple light seasoning. The same taste of home. I see. Yeah. The food is good, to be sure, but what's with this stifling feeling? The reassuring taste of home cooking, the experience of eating with others. Those are exactly the sort of uh, things people associate with intimacy and happiness. But in counter-reaction to the peaceful atmosphere, a dark thought spreads through my mind. I shouldn't be sitting here. My chest feels tight. Drawing breath is uncomfortable. I'm off balance. I know exactly why. I've spent one and a half years since my master's death keeping my distance from others. In that time, I've grown starved for this sort of contact, and I don't want to admit this to myself because that means facing the question, do I deserve an ordinary life? Do I have the right to an everyday routine existence, living for small moments of happiness? Huh? Uh, yeah. Girls generally don't like nice and plump guys. Look, I told you I can feed myself. I've got to get used to this sort of thing sooner or later. I want to believe that, but there's a part of me that can't. Even now, there's a nagging discomfort in the corner of my mind. There's always a side of me that accepts and a side of me that denies. And in a fight, the side that denies always comes out on top. I guess that's the first thing I should try to fix about myself. Is there a reason I can't stay broken? An obvious question, but I think I'll leave it for another time. Hmm, that was interesting. Oh, I feel like I'm going to have a shorter stream today. I think I'm going to end it there. That was interesting. There was a lot of Amine this stream. She's still my least favorite, but we're getting at least a little more depth on her, which is interesting. I want to see more Sachi, to be perfectly honest. I also like uh, it when Michiru is on screen, but yeah, I think I'm going to end the stream there. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. Uh, Saturdays, 1 p.m. is generally when I stream. Sometimes, if I can't do it Saturday, I'll delay it to Sunday like I did today. Otherwise, I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day, and God bless. Catch you later.